Welcome to the Future of Ground Transportation podcast, where we discuss the exciting innovations that lie ahead for organizational ground transportation. Each episode, we cover topics tailored to those resolving transportation-related challenges and provide tips, tools, and trends that will inspire you to stay ahead of the curve. And now, here's your host, Daniel Perez. Welcome to the Future of Ground Transportation. Today, we have a special guest, Emery Mills, Senior Vice President of FTC Transportation. Emery, welcome to the show tonight. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure. So just to give you a little bit of context, Emery has a ton of experience in the transportation sector. We're going to dive deeper into safety operations, managing mechanics and overall the office staff and how safety has been a critical part of FTC transportation. So buckle up, make sure you take some really good notes and let's get started. So em Emery, um, how did you get started in the industry? Um, well, it was actually through family. Um, I first moved to Oklahoma City back in 94 and uh, my aunt worked for a trucking company and I took a temp job there. And from there it kind of grew um, and I learned different aspects of the business along the way. And I joined FTC Transportation back in 2000. So I've been here a little over 24 years now and um, I have been in every different department here with the exception of working on trucks out in the shop. Um, but I've, I've seen it from all sides and worked through safety primarily, um, but a lot in the operations side and um, just have grown to love it, love the industry, love what we do and love how we help others. Awesome. Awesome. So 24 years, how was it when you first started versus how it is today? Um, well, you know, we did a lot more on uh, paper and, and with a pencil back then. <laughs> we had computers, but we were definitely not utilizing them like we do now. So the technology is leaps and bounds different from what it was, um, you know, in 94 and even in 2000. And um, we've grown so much. We grow so much in technology every single year. So um, that's exciting to see. It, it helps, of course, improve efficiency, our communications. Um, but it, it's just been it's just been a great tool. The technology yeah. is, is probably the biggest change. Oh, the technology is remarkable. I mean, just, just two days ago, we had an incident with a driver that fell asleep behind the wheel. And one, oh. one of his first excuses was, oh, no, they actually they actually hit hit, hit the bus. And when we look into the GPS and the, the inside cameras, we, we noticed that he actually fell asleep. So oh. 20 years ago, we were not able to capture all of this minor right. or major in some cases. Thank God that it was nothing major, but, uh, you know, we, we were not able to catch these things and it was just more, he said, she said, and, you know, right. going to investigate versus now is right. everything is live. Well, and even just more recently with the, the AI technology that's out there, that's something we've incorporated more recently here, um, through our dash cam technology and the AI technology and, um, it's just, it's making us safer and be better out there. It's making us more alert. It's helping put complacency in its place. It's getting rid of it. Um, so, you know, we began with um, earlier this year using some of the AI technology and the drivers have come so far just in a very short time. Um, they, you know, from getting a lot of alerts and a lot of coaching, you know, in-cap coaching and us even getting alerts to, I mean, their scores are just tremendous. So, they're, they're, you know, paying attention, they're using it the right way, and it's making all of us safer out on the roadway. So yeah. it, it, it's an incredible. Totally. So you brought a great point. Let's, let's talk about AI technology since we're already in this subject. So how is it helping you at a high level, which technologies you're using with AI um, and what has really moved the needle for uh, FTC transportation? Well, I mean, I'll be real honest. We we have an amazing team here, and we've we've done really well with safety, but you can always do better. And so, um, we we're a smaller company, and um, we're not necessarily in business to make a lot of money or anything. We're here to serve, feed the children, and we do other loads as well. Um, but with that in mind, we don't we don't have a huge budget for technology or anything else. And so, we spend a lot of time really researching. Um, We've had, of course, our ELD for quite a while, 
We upgraded our ELDs this last year to incorporate with our dash cams, incorporate with our dispatching software, you know, our payroll system, everything. So when we did that, um, you know, obviously it's improved efficiency in a lot of different areas in ways that we didn't even realize um, initially that it would. But the the AI technology portion of it, um, the in-cap coaching, you know, where we're, you know, we may get data or feedback uh, before we had this technology. We may see it on an engine download during a PM service or, you know, where they've had a high speed or, you know, a lot of hard breaks or something. But we're dealing with that, you know, once every few months. And now this is an instant. We're getting in-cap coaching. You know, the drivers are knowing in that moment that something's wrong and they're able to correct it immediately before we're even alerted in the office. So just the ability to, I mean, like I said, it, it, it's just making us all safer out on the roads. If we all had it in our vehicles, that would be terrific. Um, but these drivers that have that technology in their vehicles, once they get accustomed to it, um, it it's just it's incredible, yeah. but it, it is helping our safety picture. The the dash cams, just everything that they're capturing, uh, suggesting to those, um, you know, it saved us a lot of, you know, different points of views on an accident. We're getting the real, the real information on an accident if we're involved in an accident. And so it saved us a lot of dollars there as well. So Totally. That is very well said. I mean, one of the things that we talk the most here at DPV and with a lot of the operators that that we work with and a lot of the folks who has been in the show is all about proactive instead of reactive, whether it's in maintenance, in safety or in operations, it's all about how do we respond before anything happens? And in transportation, it's all about being 10 steps ahead of what could happen because it will happen. So Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate happen. it. And yeah, anything that we can do, I mean, that's, that is our goal is to, to prevent that day from happening. Um, you know, we, we set goals, we set goals, um, every year and we track those every single month Well, we track them daily, but every month we're reporting on those goals, but we're not just reporting them internally to ourselves. We're, we're having safety meetings with our drivers and we're talking about, you know, here's our goal line and this is where we're at compared to our goal. And, you know, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What can we do better? And we're getting that input from every member of our team, whether it's one of our our technicians in our shop, it's one of our dispatchers, one of our drivers that are over the road. Um, everybody's got input into that of what, what we're seeing as a problem, what can we fix and what are we doing really well? And let's commend people for doing that. Okay, so so um, so thank you. So yes, that's, that's very well said. So let's just transition a little bit to what are the main challenges that you guys are sort of experiencing uh, currently, like what is the biggest challenges in your industry or overall in, in the business that you, that you see or foresee coming up? Um, well, of course, right now, like everybody else, um, spot rates, <laughs> that that's a, a challenge for us right now, even though we're seeing some movement upward. Um, uh, if you'd asked me a year ago, I would have said recruiting. Um, but we have had an influx of drivers. We have a lot of new drivers coming into the industry, which is exciting to see. Um, because we were worried with all of the drivers that were hitting retirement age a few years ago. Um, so we're excited to see all the new drivers in the industry. Um, we have been really fortunate um, more recently, not only are we full staff, but we have a wait list of drivers trying to get on board with us. Right. Um, so that that's really a, a great place for us to be right now. And I hope that continues. But for us right now, um, you know, obviously the freight and the rates, that's, that's an ongoing issue for us right now. Um, but it will come back around. It always does. You know, it, it's, you know, one of those cyclical things that, you know, it'll get better and then it'll get worse again. So uh, we'll just ride the wave. So when you said about the, um, the rates, like what, what is causing this race to, to spike? Um, well, I mean, they're going up a little bit right now. Um, you know, anytime there's a presidential election that affects everything, <laughs> you know, we see, I mean, if you're watching the economy and watching the stock market at all, you're seeing it every day. You're seeing something different. It's going up. It's going down. So we, we're used to seeing that during, you know, an election year. Obviously, coming out of COVID, that affected a lot of things. Um, and then we had this huge burst and did great in freight and rates. And then it kind of plateaued. And then we plummeted with the economy, um, you know, about, I would say, two years ago. Um, but like I said, we are seeing a gradual increase the last few months. 
and we're hoping to see some more by the end of the year on rates. Um, we've got plenty of freight, but the rates aren't always matching, you know, what we need. So, um, but it, it is improving some. We're hopeful that it's going to continue on that climb. So, Got it. Thank you. And is it affecting you with the shutdowns of, of all of these ports that are currently uh, protesting? Is that um, affecting you as well? It is not at this exact moment. Um, I think because it's been so recent, it's not it's not having a direct effect on us just yet. Um, that doesn't mean it won't, but because it's only been, I think we're at, you know, a week. Um, it, it, you know, I think we're, you know, right now we're solid, but um, I, I know it will have a ripple effect. So, and it'll yeah. affect us and everybody else, but I, we, we aren't seeing it just yet. Totally, I 100% agree. I, the, for, we haven't seen the, the effect, but the ritual effect is gonna be in a few weeks or months until we start seeing a supply chain issues of whether it's parts, inventory, or who knows who. So yeah, that's very well said. So I know that um, based based on your bio and based on FTC, you guys have been locally and nationally recognized on safety. So let's talk a little bit about safety. What has worked, what hasn't worked? Um, So at at a high level, what has put you guys on, you know, on, on being one of the top players in, in safety? Uh, well, we're kind of positioned because we're small. We've got 25 drivers, 25 trucks, and we're positioned in that area where we can do a lot of hands-on with our drivers, even though they are over the road, even though we don't see them every week or every month. When we do see them, we're able to maximize that time with them. And we're, we're a small company overall. We have a small staff, um, but able to spend that time with them, um, hands-on approaches, um, it's not just, you know, an email communication or a, you know, message to their cap communication. Um, but we're able to do a lot of one-on-one communications. And I think that helps when, when they're hearing a common message from everybody. So, for instance, October is Health and Safety Awareness Month for us here. And although our focus is always on safety, we're raising that awareness during October. And they're getting that message from, you know, every team member is getting that message from every other team member here that, you know, what our goals are, which is zero negative safety occurrences this month, um, but also what are we going to do to get there? So is it, you know, making sure your mirrors are properly adjusted or doing a walk around pre-trip with you, making sure you're not missing anything, Um, just anything that we can do to raise that level of awareness and put those challenges to fight complacency out there Um, anytime we can do that. And that's been an ongoing effort for you know, almost as long as I've been here, we have been doing that. So, um, you know, but again, because of our size, we're able to do a lot of that, that, you know, um, it, it just puts us in a unique spot to be able to. God, God. And is there a specific technology? Is it a safety director that is, that is leading this endeavor? Is it a team effort? If you, you know, like what, what is the uh, crystal ball for you guys? Um, it's a it's a team effort. It's that everybody is on the same page. We're giving the same message to each other. Uh, you know, everybody participates in health and safety awareness. So, um, you know, it may be our mechanics out there. Um, we, you know, occasionally do where they salt the equipment. They break a truck and trailer, essentially. They put a lot of defects on it. And our drivers and our safety team, they're inspecting that equipment and looking for all those defects. And um, when they, you know, we have a checklist, we walk around. If they don't find them, then we're going back and doing a coaching session with them to show them items that they missed, how to inspect something properly. Um, You know, it's just a learning tool. So anything that we can do in a learning type environment and, you know, everybody learns a little bit differently. We do some things through computer training. We have, um, you know, classroom type lessons as well. But hands-on seems to really have the biggest impact when we're all going out there, when we're taking time to walk out there. Let's walk around the equipment. Let's put our hands on it. Let's really look at it. Let's get under the trailer, um, whatever that is. Um, That makes a really big impact um, when we're talking about safety. And and your safety starts at the beginning of the day with your pre-trip, and it's throughout the day every time you're walking around that equipment. So there's so many components to safety, but definitely inspections are one of those things when you're checking your equipment so we put a lot of focus on that but we put a lot of focus on you know as the weather changes or as school goes back into session you know anything that we can do to just raise that level of awareness always is what we're what what we're shooting for that's our goal got it 
Thank you. Yeah, it seems like um, you guys are definitely having some traction and it's a collaboration of the team moving that sort of initiative forward. And um, when it comes into thinking of the future, whether it's autonomous vehicles, flying vehicles, you know, autonomous trucks, what comes to the top of your mind? I know, you know, is no one has the crystal ball. We have a lot of uh, senior leaders for from the variety of companies and, and no one has a crystal ball. But based on your experience, what do you foresee when it comes into whether it's autonomous vehicles or flying vehicles? Is it really going to disrupt the, the trucking or transportation industry at one point? What do you what do you what do you foresee? What comes to mind? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about disrupting the trucking industry. It would definitely change it. You know, it's definitely going to, you know, just as we've seen over the years, things change. You know, we streamline operations. Um, if we're with autonomous, obviously that's streamlining an additional part of, of operations. Um, you know, there's so many things that could happen. I think the best benefit that we've seen so far is not just the safety technology, but also um, what we're doing to improve our our um, our impact on on our planet. So, you know, anything that we're doing to improve not just efficiency, but you know, our footprint that we're leaving behind and um, when we're doing those things, when we're improving our fuel mileage and, you know, reducing emissions, when we're doing those types of things, um, you know, I, I know that that's a constant push forward and I know that there's lots of battles there and that's a very large battleground, um, but it's one of the best things that we can do, obviously. Um, so just improving that efficiency overall, it makes us all better. The streamlining, going to an autonomous, the thought of, um, completely autonomous and not having drivers um, makes my stomach hurt a little bit um, for lots of reasons. Obviously, there's safety um, issues that could definitely arise there. Um, you know, technology fails. We all know that. It's not 100% all the time. Um, but also, we work alongside of some amazing men and women in the industry. And to think that their careers may fall by the wayside at some point is a sad thought for all of us. Yeah, so. cool. That is very well said. And uh, Emery, when it comes into just to transition a little bit to scaling the business, what what have you seen that has helped FTC transportation that you could share with other uh, business operators in this industry? But what, what helped you guys sort of scale throughout the the years? Um, I, I think the level of accountability, really tracking, not just you're, you're not just doing your historical data and tracking all of that, but you're setting your goals um, continually and you're moving those goal posts to improve constantly in every area. So whether it's, you know, through our accounting department or our dispatch or our safety, whatever we're doing, um, just constantly striving to improve um, and, you know, improve how we're working with each other. You know, we're not in, um, we're not back, when everybody would, you know, kick walls and yell and scream and throw things, you know, we've moved past that. We've all evolved as humans. And I think we've all gotten better communicating with each other and learning to meet people where they are and to, um, you know, try to listen more than trying to be heard. So um, I think if we're doing those things, I think we're moving in the right direction. I love it. So uh, a lot of accountability, data, to, to support that accountability behind it. Right, right. Perfect. Thank you. Now that is that is very well said because what we've seen in, in different businesses that we operate is is just that accountability that is essential in order to, to really move the needle. And uh, there's folks that like it and there's folks that once they see that accountability, you know, they're just not built for it. But every, it depends on the on the company culture as well. Well, you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. You can't make a plan unless you know what works and what doesn't work. So, um, until you, you until you've got that data, you can't really form a good a good game plan for what direction to go into. So yes, totally, hundred percent. And uh, what's the best business advice you ever got in Emory? Um, well, years ago, um, I heard you know if you always do which, and I it's not. It wasn't my business leader, obviously. It's a famous quote, and I don't remember who quote who's quoted as, unfortunately. But, you know, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. So 
if you don't ever change or evolve. If you're happy with your results, then that's great. Don't change and evolve. But, you know, if you see room for improvement and we do, then you need to change it up. You need to make some changes, some improvements and, you know, again, see what works and what doesn't work and start making those changes. Uh, very well said. It reminds me of insanity, which is doing the same things over and over and expecting yes. different results. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much for for joining us tonight. It's been a pleasure having you. I know it's a, it's a brief uh, episode. And before we, we close for the night, what is the uh, best books that comes to the top of, top of your mind? Um, well, the one right off the top is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It's really trying to listen and understand people. Um, you know, if, if that's probably the main takeaway from that book for me is really taking the time to understand someone. And from there, then you can start a conversation. But if you don't understand someone's viewpoint, where they're coming from in their history, there's really no conversation to be had. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Again, Emery, it was a pleasure having you. This is Emery with the Senior Vice President of FTC Transportation. It's a pleasure having you tonight and wishing you the best. Thank you for joining us tonight. All the best, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed the episode and got some valuable insights. If you're curious to learn more, head over to the resource website, at dpvtransportation.com where we got a ton of useful resources and tools for you to stay ahead of the game. And before we wrap it up, I want to invite you to book a free guest admission consultation or a consultation about your ground transportation program with us. Just register on our website. It's a fantastic way to see how your fleet is doing or how your overall program could be improved. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll catch you next time on the Future of Ground Transportation. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to the Future of Ground Transportation. We appreciate you coming along for the ride. If you found value in this episode and want to hear more, please make sure to subscribe to the show.